Welcome back. Um, so before we move on and discuss about valvulopathies as possible causes of heart failure, I would just like to go back to what we were discussing in the previous video, namely about hypertension as a possible cause of heart failure. Uh, so I've got a few further little pieces of information that I would like to add on. So the first one is that I did not go through all the different causes of pulmonary hypertension with you. I named two. I talked about the fact that there is idiopathic or primary pulmonary hypertension, and then I talked about the fact that you can have pulmonary hypertension secondary to uh, lung disease. However, I would just like to mention a few other causes of pulmonary hypertension, one of which isn't going to be important for the rest of the video, but the other one is going to become very important um, in the uh, later parts of the video. So the first one is that pulmonary emboli can cause uh, pulmonary hypertension. So I'll just write this down. So another possible cause of pulmonary hypertension is if you've got a pulmonary embolism or pulmonary emboli. So remember, this is the name for having a blood clot in the pulmonary arterial system. So Blood clots can form in the systemic venous system, typically in the veins in the leg, and what can happen is those blood clots can fly off, they come up the inferior vena cava, they go through the right atrium, they then go through the right ventricle, get flown off into the pulmonary circulation, and they continue on until they get to a blood vessel that is too small for them to travel down, and then they get stuck there and they block that pulmonary arterial blood vessel. And depending on how big they are, this can cause a massive problem. You know, if you get a pulmonary embolism that blocks one of the main pulmonary arteries, that is a major, major problem. If you get a pulmonary embolism that's big enough to actually block the whole pulmonary trunk, i.e. that sits here, that's called a saddle embolus, when it sits uh, in the splitting of the pulmonary trunk into the two pulmonary arteries, that can, ne that can be fatal. Now, um, Apart from all the other horrific consequences of pulmonary embolism, uh, one of the consequences is pulmonary hypertension, because obviously if you block uh, a major branch, either one of the pulmonary arteries or a major branch of a pulmonary artery, uh, then the blood that causes a significant increase in the resistance. You know, all the blood's going to now have to be forced through the remaining uh, blood vessels, and that means that the resistance is going to be greater than it was previously because you've blocked a channel that was open previously and that means that the, the pressure is going to build up in this pulmonary arterial system so that's another cause of uh, pulmonary hypertension the pulmonary embolus or pulmonary emboli of course it's not necessarily the case that you just get one you might get multiple blocking separate uh, pulmonary arterial vessels uh, and that can lead to a rise in pulmonary pressure just to discuss all the other consequences of pulmonary emboli, of course, now what ha has to happen is all the blood has to flow through the remaining blood vessels, and that means it's going to have to flow faster through those remaining blood vessels um, because of the higher pressure pushing it through. Um, and uh, that leads to problems with gas exchange, basically. If it's moving faster, it's not got as much time to, you know, load on oxygen and get rid of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is fantastic. It unloads incredibly quickly. Oxygen, however, is a pain. It doesn't load very quickly. It loads much, much slower than carbon dioxide unloads. So often when you do have bad pulmonary emboli or pulmonary embolism, uh, you get hypoxia without hypercapnia because the CO2 has still got time to get off, uh, but the oxygen doesn't have time to get in. Um, so, and obviously if you get a saddle embolus, then it's game over, there's no flow whatsoever, that causes complete cardiac arrest. Um, so, pulmonary emboli, another possible cause for uh, pulmonary hypertension, and remember, pulmonary emboli can sit around for ages, sometimes this is a missed diagnosis, because it is difficult to diagnose this, really the only way to diagnose it is to CT someone, and you don't really want to CT people. One, because it's expensive, and two, because it's a massive radiation dose. Um, so uh, often uh, this is a diagnosis that gets missed, and these pulmonary emboli sit there for absolutely ages. It takes the body absolutely ages sometimes to break them down on its own accord. And therefore, people can have these blocking arteries for absolute ages, causing pulmonary hypertension for a significant period of time. And that can then lead to uh, right heart failure or overall just heart failure uh, and all of the ramifications that we haven't yet come on to, but which we'll come on to in later videos. Now, the next 
thing I want to mention is the next cause of pulmonary hypertension is actually left heart failure. And we'll come on to this much, much later when we talk about the consequences of heart failure, when we talk specifically about pulmonary edema. So for now, I will just give you a brief explanation. Let's say something is going wrong in the left heart. Let's say someone has left heart failure, which remember just means heart failure due to pathology on the left hand side. So let's say again that they have aortic stenosis, which is blocking the left ventricle. Or in fact, let's say they've got systemic hypertension because that's the one we've already discussed. We'll come on to aortic stenosis when we come on to valvulopathies. So let's say they've got systemic hypertension, really, really bad acute systemic hypertension from not taking their medicines. What will happen is the left ventricle can't fight against that. There's nothing wrong with it, but you know, it can't cope with that blood pressure. So it can't pump blood properly. That means that the blood backs up into the left atrium here and then backs up into the, all of the pulmonary venous system, so you end up with pulmonary venous hypertension. And even though, and this is where I'm going to have to do a bit of backtracking. So remember I drew this circle for you earlier and reminded you of the fact that it's one great big cycle and that the flow rate has to be equal everywhere. However, initially that won't actually be completely true. Let me explain. So, let's say this person has suddenly developed systemic hypertension. So they've stopped taking their meds, they've suddenly developed systemic hypertension. What will happen initially is the left ventricle will now be not ejecting enough blood, but initially the right ventricle will still be pushing, you know, just as hard as it was previously, pushing the same amount of blood into the pulmonary trunk. So the flow rate here is going to be much higher than the flow rate here. So you've then got an uneven flow. That means that blood is then going to build up in the pulmonary system. So you end up with the blood coming into the through the pulmonary arterial systems, all this blood coming from the right ventricle, which is still pumping hard. It's then going into the pulmonary venous system, but not enough flow is happening out of the pulmonary venous system because not enough flow is coming from the left ventricle into the systemic arterial system. So you then get this blood building up in the pulmonary venous system, that will cause pulmonary venous hypertension. So you'll get pulmonary, I don't know why I'm bothering to write this fully out, but pulmonary venous hypertension. So the pressure will go up in the pulmonary venous system. It will then back up into the capillaries, back up into the arterial system. So you'll then get hypertension in the pulmonary arterial system. And that will then precipitate right heart failure because the right ventricle then won't be able to pump against this pressure and finally it will then pump less blood as well so then you'll get equal flows everywhere but initially you will get unequal flows which is what will lead to the pulmonary venous hypertension and then the pulmonary arterial hypertension and we're going to discuss this later because a horrific consequence of left heart failure is this pulmonary venous hypertension and that occurs because that means that there's going to be too high pressure in the capillaries between the pulmonary arterial system and the pulmonary venous system. So if we just draw, let's say this is the arterial going into the capillary there in green and then the venous system here. So if there's too high pressure here, it backs up into the capillaries, too high pressure here, too high pressure in the pulmonary arterial system. The too high pressure in the capillaries means more fluid is going to come out into the lung interstitial space. So you get fluid building up in the lung tissue. That is a horrific phenomenon called pulmonary edema. And that is something that can happen when people have left heart failure, i.e. when the cause of their heart failure is on the left side. You can get fluid building up in the lungs, something called pulmonary edema. It means that all the tissue becomes wet and sodden and that damages gas exchange because now, all of that water is in the way for the oxygen to get in. So if we just draw a little picture of the lungs, so here are the alveoli, and I wasn't actually intending to discuss this at this point of the video. We were going to come on to this much later. So here's a tiny little bronchiole. Here are the alveoli. Uh, the capillaries are obviously in the lung interstitial tissue here. If all of this fluid is coming out, then you get loads of fluid here, and that increases the... Um, diffusion distance for gases, so it damages uh, gaseous exchange, uh, so it's not good, it can lead to respiratory failure. So heart failure, left heart failure, can lead to uh, respiratory failure. 
And that is actually one of the horrific consequences of specifically left heart failure. If you've solely got right heart failure, um, i.e. the cause is solely on the right side, then you won't get this. But in left heart failure, you can get respiratory failure from pulmonary edema. We'll discuss this again later when we come on to the horrific consequences of heart failure. For now, we want to discuss the causes. So we want to go back to what we were supposed to be discussing, which is valvulopathies. Um, and in fact, actually, I think I'll have a break here. We've been going for 10 minutes and I can barely handle more than 10 minutes. So um, we'll have a break. And then in the next video, we'll, we, I promise we will do valvulopathies.